Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to work the problems with me, in order for you to be able to prepare for the exam. This is the only book on the market which contains the real GRE questions. And this one, in my opinion, is the best product out there. Anyway, uh, we are on page number, the problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 121. Today is our day number 14. Turn to page 121 and you will see the question. It says, which of the following numbers have a product greater than 60? Which of the following number has a product greater than 60? And of course the 60 that they're giving, giving us is positive 60. And the answer choice is here, A, B, C, D, E. Negative 9, negative 7, 6, and 8. There are only four answer choices. Let's, let's erase this positive sign. Now, because because this product of handwriting is atrocious, because this product that is given to us, because this product that is given to us is positive, as you can clearly see, the product that is given to us is 60. 60, positive 60 that is. Because this product that is given to us is positive, therefore, therefore, this means therefore, therefore, the two numbers that we are looking for are either both positive because positive times positive is positive because positive times positive equals positive number and we have positive 60 here or both negatives because negative times the negative equals positive. But that leaves us with only two choices among the answer choices that are given to us. It leaves us with only two choices. The two numbers that we're looking for are either negative 9 times negative 7, negative 9 times negative 7, and 9 times 7, 9 sevens are 63. And how do I know that? Because 10 sevens are 70, and if we were to take away 1 7 from 70, that leaves us with 63. And negative times a negative is positive. So that's more than 60. Wow, there we go. The other possibility would be the two numbers are both positive. They're both, both positive right here, this scenario. But these are, those are these two numbers, 6 and 8. But 6, positive 6, and a positive 8, is positive 48. It is not more than 60. We're looking for a product that is more than 60. 48. 48 is not more than 60. So these are not the numbers that we're looking for. The numbers that we're looking for are negative 9 and negative 7. That's all. That's it. We're done. Let's do the next problem on the same page. I'm going to erase all of this thing. Perhaps I gave too much explanation here than that was needed. It's a pretty straightforward problem. That's it. We're done. Same page number, page number 
It says which of the following integers are both which of the following integers are multiples of both 2 and 3? Multiples of both 2 and 3. Let's see. A is 8. 8 is a multiple of 2 but not 3 because 8 equals 2 times 2 times 2 there, are, there is no 3 here there is no there exists no integers such that 3 times that integer is going to equal 8 8 does not divide him into 3 so that's wrong B says 9 9 is a multiple of 3 but not 2. You can't divide 9 evenly into 2. 9 just equals 3 times 3. There is no 2 in it. 2 is not a factor of 9. That's how we say it. 2 is not a factor of 9. Another way of saying the same thing is that one cannot divide 9 evenly into 2. That's not the answer. C. C is 12. Oh, there you go. Now we're getting into nitty gritty. 12 can be written as 2 times 6 which can be further written as 2 times 2 times 3. Now you see, we see, can clearly see that 12 is both a multiple of 2 and 3. So that works. 21. D is 21. The factors of 21 are simply 3 times 7. So it's a multiple of 3, as you can clearly see, 21 is a multiple of 3, but it's not a multiple of 2. 21 is not a multiple of 2. 21, 21 is a multiple of 3, but not 2. 21 is simply 3 times 7. And finally we have, something has gone wrong, I'm, I missed one, haven't I? A was 8, B was 9, C was 12, I left out 18. I left out 18. This is E. This is E. Let's look at D. D is 18, which can be written as 2 times 9 which can be further written as 2 times 3 times 3. Aha! 18 is both a multiple of 2 and 3. D works. And finally we have E. Let's take a look at E here. It's 36. 36 can be written as 2 times 18, which can be written as 2 times 2 times 9, because 2 times 9 is 18, which can be further written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. As you can clearly see, 36 is a multiple of 3 and 2. So that is the right answer. So in this question, which is a new type of new animal in the GRE, listen very carefully. In this new type of questions in the GRE, you're given a whole bunch of answer choices, sometimes four answer choices, sometimes five answer choices, sometimes as many as six, seven or eight answer choices. And you're asked which of the following integers are multiples of two and three. And your job is to locate every single one of the right answer choices. If you miss one, you will not get credit for anything at all. So if there are four right answer choices and you only happen to locate three of the, out of those four, no credit for you. Do you understand? Be very careful and take your time. Make sure that you analyze every one of them and check mark every single answer choice that is correct. So here, the correct answer choices would be the correct answer choices would be C as we can saw as, as we saw here C, D as we saw here, which I almost missed, and then E. There are three right answer choices here. There are three right. There are three correct answer choices. 12, 18, and 36, all three of these are multiples of both 2 and 3. And unless I mark all three of them, 
I will not get credit for it. Okay. I will see you tomorrow on day number 15 when we'll do a problem dealing with average which is a little bit more complicated and on the following day we'll do the next problem that you see on page number 123 which is, a, which is uh, even more involved sometimes I've heard people who have trouble understanding this question the one that you find on day 123 uh, the one that you find on page 123 but I'm not going to skip around as I explained to you in the first day in the introduction my goal is to do every single problem out of this book in a strict sequence of the page number. If there is a problem, if there is a math problem on the, on the given page, no matter how simple it is, you and I are going to do that. And that's the idea. Make sure you do every single problem, every single pro math problem out of this book here, and that will be an excellent preparation for the math portion of the GRE. Because any concept that appears in the GRE well, is covered in here. And anything that does not appear on the GRE, you don't have to worry about it because if it, if it is important for the GRE, it would have been here. Do you understand? Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Enough of the lecture, enough of the sermon. Let's say Amen. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 15. Okay. Bye now.